Good evening, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue or Southeast Asia TV. Tonight, I have the pleasure to have with me uh, a good friend of mine, David Van, who appeared here a couple of times wearing different hat, uh, but this time he's coming, you know, to the show to discuss about in, uh, industrial development, uh, the prospect of moving from an agricultural base to a agro industry and eventually toward the uh, industrial development through innovation and technology and science, etc. Uh, as you know, that uh, my focus this year is uh, pushing a lot of thinking in the area on advancing our economy uh, you know, through science, through technology, through more competitiveness, uh, you know, uh, in the industry. Uh, so David is uh, coming in this his capacity as uh, the country representative of the Bao Group, which is a regional. Uh, you know, consulting you know, on ASEAN, but perhaps uh, I would let uh, David uh, just uh, to explain a bit what the Bao Group is doing and what is it doing, and then we can go for our dialogue. David, welcome once again oh, to our show. Yes. Thank you. Pleasure to be here again. Um, the, uh, let me sort of drive a little bit on uh, what the uh, Bao Group Asia is uh, doing. Uh, Bao Group Asia is a specialized consulting firm based in Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, they have primary uh, uh, sort of established offices in most of the ASEAN countries, eight of them except Brunei and Laos. Okay. Uh, but they also do have uh, uh, presence in Taiwan okay. and all the way spreading to um, uh, South Asia, which is Bangladesh, Nepal and India. Hmm. Uh, the Bao Group Asia is more attuned in a special consulting, which is not like many other people mm. what, what they are doing. I mean, mm. the Bauer Group Asia is more on the uh, helping mm. multinational corporations I see. doing uh, uh, government policies lobbying, I see. Uh, helping them to engage in a much better effective way with the government where they are having their own operations. Mm. And uh, the majority of the clients of yeah. the Bauer Group Asia are primarily from the U.S. Fortune 500 okay. firms okay. like Coca-Cola, Hewlett-Packard, yes. Cisco, mm. Johnson and Johnson, etc. Yeah. So basically, you know, uh, you you with a group whose perspective uh, to a country is very macro at the macro policy Correct. level, quite Correct. a bit, right? But then this is good because you 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 sort of see a bit each country. Let's say Cambodia is uh, moving quite fast now toward uh, integrating into the ASEAN economic mm -hmm. community by the end of 2015. But you know, uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, we all are positioning what will be the benefit of uh, you know, entering this economic community Correct. and you know, what do we have to do to be ready? What do we have to do to get our population to, to understand our industry, to, get, uh, to compete? But at the end of the day, it's all about competing to have access to FDI, competing to have access to, you know, employment, uh, to job, industry that can create job employment. Mm -hmm. right. uh, what's your view from the regional competitiveness side, right? A country like Cambodia, no different than Laos, no different than, uh, you know, other country who are in a certain level of economic development where we start with agriculture and then agriculture is doing fine, then you move to the second step, which is agro-industry. What, what do you see the key challenge facing uh, country that are going through that transformation? I guess overall, um, we call it CLMV, like mm, Cambodia, yeah, Laos, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Myanmar, Myanmar Vietnam. Yes. They are having about the same uh, phase of development. Yes. Uh, a lot of hype is now going on over uh, Myanmar yes. uh, as a market. Mm. Uh, but as far as Cambodia is concerned, um, there is no secret formula. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, it all boils down to how do we um, improve our competitiveness, yes. uh, notwithstanding the uh, various um, uh, market access privilege that mm. Cambodia has now as a least developed country, yes. uh, like the European EBA and so forth, uh, like the uh, uh, market privilege that we have access to Canada or, mm. or the US. Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, those benefits will not last. And we are talking about Cambodia upgrading mm. into a middle income country by 2015 or 2016. Yes. Which means by then, all those benefits will be definitely phased out as you reach the middle income status. Mm. 
So the challenge for us is how do we, from the private sector and the government, mm. work closely hand in hand on mm. addressing the competitiveness yes. of our products. Uh, you mentioned the word competitiveness. We, we had some discussion quite a bit you know, in previous show with the, the monitor group and uh, many mm. other uh, people who look at you know, Cambodia in, in its competition in the region. Right. Let's face it, at the end of the day, it's not a country that competes. It is the industry that competes. It is the, the factory that competes. Correct. It is the company that competes. What would be the, the, the gist in the Cambodian context? What do we have to do? What are the key elements to make our industry competitive first? Uh, competitiveness uh, uh, is englobed a lot of um, parameters. Yes. You have competitiveness through skills mm -hmm. development yes. for human resources yes. uh, side. You have competitiveness through infrastructure, mm -hmm. energy, logistics, yeah. that sort of thing. Yes. But, infrastructure but, but, but these are the, 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 the larger country you know, uh, supporting element for competitiveness, right? Correct. But when you talk about all those other parameters like uh, beside the skill, yeah. uh, you have the better road better uh, uh, navigation system mm. Uh, mm. for waterways, uh, better railway system, yeah, yeah. those are only the hard, mm. but you still have to uh, really work on the soft, mm. because the hard without the soft mm. also would not uh, give you much uh, competitive edge. Yes. Speaking of the soft, are you referring you know, uh, to, say for example, energy, because at mm. the end of the day, everything boils down to Correct. energy, if your energy cost is high, here go some of your competitiveness, right? mm -hmm. Correct. So energy is one element. Uh, energy in Cambodia is basically, we can identify hydropower as the okay. most potential. Okay. Uh, that is very obvious. Through Wh those, which uh, the government is currently building quite a, a few. Correct, correct. Uh, hydropower being the most potential. Then second, we have uh, quite a few uh, coal mm. uh, power plants. Yes. But people, when they mention coal, is tend to raise a little bit of eyebrow because yes, of the because environmental of the issue yeah, and so exactly, forth. Yeah. And then we also have the solar power, mm. which at this point in time for Cambodia is still a little bit far off mm. because of the cost. Yes. And there's no way we can in the near future have solar power to be applied on the industrial scale. Okay, so hopefully over time, with the better technology, we can uh, apply that. Correct, correct. But Energy, again, uh, the cost of the energy used in any given uh, mm. manufacturing plant yeah. is also a determinant factor for attracting uh, foreign direct investment. I, I, in the case of Cambodia, to be quite specific, because I know you are very involved in the rice you know, uh, industry, uh, what is the percentage of cost, cost-wise, right, that energy mm -hmm. play in the overall cost structure of, of the rice miller, for example? Well, I do not have the exact percentage uh, no, so or, or ratio, but uh, I would say if you put up a, um, a rice mill mm. uh, uh, from a survey that uh, the uh, Dutch uh, NGO SNV has done over 200 millers, yes. uh, they still find out that more than 80% of mm. those 200 over rice millers are still using uh, primarily their own uh, generator sets. Which is quite energy. expensive. Huh? It is quite expensive. Uh, average out about 23 cents, US cents hmm. per uh, kilowatt. Uh, yes. But the 23 cents is only the direct cost of the fuel itself. Hmm. Uh, yes. People did not yet factor in the cost of the precision of the equipment, the cost yeah. of maintenance, maintenance of the equipment. Yeah. Hmm. So if you factor that in, it would work out easily about 25, 26 cents. It, it, does it make sense that eventually they move to a natural grid though? The national grid, yes, but it still takes uh, quite a while mm -hmm. for the government uh, side to actually uh, lay out the national grid and have all this uh, electrification reaching out to the uh, yes, yes. rural side. Yes, yes. And the Prime Minister has mentioned in his speech uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago at yeah. the Cambodia Outlook uh, 2013 yeah. that the government would have a target by mm -hmm. 2020 only to mm -hmm. be able to uh, uh, electrify, so to say, uh, most of the rural area. Hmm. So 2015 is still quite some time. But you see a, a trend that we will have more supply of energy and therefore a cost reduction to, to the miller? 
that should be the logic. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, there is a certain uh, thing that I still do not quite comprehend is okay. that uh, in other countries, yes. uh, the more you use electricity and the lesser you are paying in terms of grid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I unfortunately not here. here. Yeah. Uh, so um, there is a certain uh, sense of logic that um, maybe need to uh, okay. uh, address. Yes. So in other words, if, we, if the industrialists consume more, then Correct. the price should be down, right? Uh, so, so, so energy play a big cost, right? I mean, in, in terms of energy uh, provision. But I think there are many other possible ways that the, the, the rice miller themselves mm -hmm. could uh, improve. Say, for example, if they buy better technology that consume less, for example, right? right? Uh, better technology that uh, can make uh, of storage, for example, or of uh, you know, sort of like uh, drying mm -hmm. the, the paddy, for example. Right. They, they could uh, save some energy at the same time and at the same time uh, improve the quality of the milling. Uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, modern technology, mm -hmm. like uh, using rye husk, yes. uh, for instance. But Into uh, gasifier? Yes. Okay. But uh, at the moment, again, from that survey that we have done, mm. uh, it seems that a very small percentage of the local rice miller can afford to invest in that sort of uh, uh, quite costly uh, uh, capital mm. expenditure sort of uh, equipment. So, so in this case, even the context of a, a small economy like Cambodia, the potential is there, that's what you're saying? Mm, right. Except that the cost of technology is still too high for the smaller miller to, to, to invest? The local miller, as we all know, always have uh, an issue of access to finance. To finance. So that's therefore, that's they issue. do not have that sort of ability yet mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, move to the next, okay. uh, next lap of development. Can, can, can I then draw from what you said that uh, if we look at the national competitiveness side, right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, energy play a major role right. Right, to move to move up. Well, number one, to make the industry survive first. Because right. if, if you can't survive the competition, you're dead, right? Uh, but once you survive, the next step is, you know, to, to be ahead of the game Correct. by reducing costs and, you know, uh, benefiting from other, I would say here, trade uh, preferences. But, but we're, we're not talking about trade here. We're talking more about, you know, how do we look at competitiveness from the, the, the cluster you know, uh, side, how do we reduce the uh, cost, you know, through uh, better efficient technology. Cluster, what do you think of cluster in the context, of, in this case of Cambodia moving up uh, this processing, you know, value chain there from raw agricultural export to semi-processing, moving to agro-industry, for example. Well, again, cluster is a um, common uh, concept that uh, about every country is using. Yes. Uh, Cambodia does already practice the cluster concept. Uh, look at the special economic zone okay. that we have. Yes. This is already a perfect example of clustering. Can you describe it more? However, in uh, those um, special economic zone that we have here, mm. uh, there was a survey, again, based okay. on uh, uh, studying the energy cost yes. provided in those special economic zones. Uh, the Japanese uh, firm Ernst & Young did mm. a survey last year. Mm. And uh, the finding is still uh, quite uh, astonishing in the sense that if they look at the Phnom Penh Special Economic Zone, mm. the cost of energy mm. is still 19 US cents okay. per kilowatt versus, versus uh, in uh, Bavet, yes. uh, which is near uh, uh, mm. bordering Vietnam, uh, is about 12 cents. Okay. And when they look at the Phnom Penh, uh, the uh, Special Economic Zone in Senoville, yeah. This has gone tremendously high, up to uh, 22 cents, 25 cents. Because? Um, perhaps that particular area is not yet well serviced in terms ah, of see, uh, uh, electrification. Perhaps uh, economy of scale plays a factor here? Definitely, okay. definitely. Yeah. So, so in other words, they still hope that as we have more clients, maybe the rate uh, you know, will be reduced. Correct. Like I said, in, in, in every aspect, you have the heart and then mm. you have the soft. Mm. Uh, if uh, the soft does not uh, give full sort of a, a satisfaction to a foreign investor, mm. then it's also difficult for them to uh, uh, extract their money out of pocket and mm. invest in mm. Cambodia. Yes. 
explain a bit more. You mentioned that uh, the uh, special economic zone has uh, already introduced the notion of cluster and you know how it can eventually help. Uh, if I can take a specific case now, you see, you know, uh, a lot of interest from mm -hmm. Japanese uh, right. manufacturer moving to Cambodia. Many of them have established full operational uh, factory already with thousands of people working already. Right. So right. What, what, what's your take on that? Well, it took the um, Japanese investor uh, quite a long time uh, to consider uh, Cambodia, but uh, once they are here, mm. um, they are actually coming here in... Uh, in trove? In big uh, yes. numbers. Yes, yes. Uh, so that means that uh, Cambodia definitely must have been doing something right in order mm -hmm. to attract yes, yes. those uh, very difficult investors. Yes, yeah, I must say the standard I wouldn't want to say difficult, but their standard is high. Very stringent. Standard. Yes, very stringent right. in terms of quality, in terms of uh, uh, product. Uh, they they demand very high standard. Correct. If I can say. Correct. So if we can if we can attract them to Cambodia, as you said, something must have uh, happened. Something definitely has happened. Uh, I think the uh, government has uh, done a very good job in offering a due incentive. Mm in giving them, uh, I would say, a decent infrastructure within which they could uh, operate, operate yeah. although there is still a lot of room for improvement. Mm, okay, yeah. okay. So, we now we're moving to a, a, a mid-level transformation uh, of the economy where we look at value addition, value extraction, uh, we look at, uh, you know, also economic diversification right. because, let's face it, you know, you, the, you, you cannot sustain an economy on one or two uh, so sort of like uh, sector correct because uh, right now uh, our tourism sector is doing quite well but you know, tourism it depends on the whims of, uh, of the world right um, but from the industrial development side where do you see you know the prospect in the future you know where we can exploit where we can extract we can process we can refine agriculture product into agro industry what are the sector aside from rice uh, I would say in the agricultural uh, sector, Cambodia does have a lot of potential in terms of rubber, mm -hmm. uh, which the Prime Minister again has mentioned very clearly that the yes. government has a, a grand plan about expanding the mm. rubber uh, sector for yes. Cambodia in the next 10-15 yes. years down the road. Yeah. Besides rubber, you also have uh, the issue of sugar, sugar, sugar cane. Yeah. Um, when I was in uh, uh, Phnom Penh port, the old terminal, uh, yeah. this weekend recently yeah. I saw a, a huge shipment yeah. of uh, Cambodian sugar yeah. bound for a uh, European market. Mm -hmm. uh, so sugar is again mm. part of one of those commodities where pricing uh, is better much controlled than uh, actually mm. Uh, mm. rice yes. as an example. If, if we look at, uh, let's call this industrial crop, right? Because you know we, we don't consume directly the, right. the crop, right? I mean, and uh, so sugar is one. So it means that uh, there are many uh, possibility that uh, that, uh, that crop can turn into a, a large industrial uh, you know, Correct. Uh, part of it. But I, I look at, uh, okay, sugar, you, 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 the end product is uh, you consume, right? That's it. But speaking of rubber, there, as, as an industrial crop, you can do so many things. Correct. Uh, in terms of uh, value addition, value extraction, in terms of... Uh, Say, for example, uh, using that as a raw material into finishing, as, or at least semi finishing product for the car industry, for example. Right, but again, uh, we also need to address the uh, uh, how do we retain value add mm. in country yes. through the reprocessing of our raw mm. rubber. What, what's your view on retaining the value in the country? Um, we still have a lack of uh, uh, sort of reprocessing okay. uh, facilities mm. in the country. Yeah. Uh, which I believe uh, has a lot to do with uh, uh, willingness from uh, mostly foreign investors mm. in uh, capturing the value add here. And yes. then it's all bounced back again to energy costs mm. at the end of the day. Yes. And most of those facilities mm. are actually located outside in the rural uh, part of Cambodia, mm. which um, the national grid or electricity has yet, to, get uh, there, yet. Uh, to get there. I, I at a reasonable cost. Okay. Uh, there's other dimension I think is important to mention uh, uh, in, in this uh, 
industrialization mm -hmm. process where you know standard and norm play a big factor here mm -hmm. you know and if i say rubber for example now the ministry of industry working with unido has been able over the last 10 years to establish uh, you know law of metrology and norm you know we, we have a, a laboratory to certify the quality of the rubber because it's important at the end of the day you can increase value you can extract the value but if you cannot justify to the market that your product you know value is really what it is correct the market wouldn't pay the value uh, the, the price that you demand for correct so so having an accreditation system in the country to certify to say that look this is number one latex in this number two latex whatever you know will will demand commensurate return so that's something that I must say I'm quite proud of uh, what the Ministry of Industry is doing in the last 10 years, working with you know, again and many other development partners to invest into this, uh, this uh, norm you know, structure. <coughs> yeah. well, standard, again, is a predeterminant factor mm. uh, when we want to export our products to mm. the uh, outside market. Yeah. Uh, the rice, yeah, again, rice is a good example. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before, Cambodian rice did not have any particular standard. Mm. And then we suffer from that. Yeah. Every time buyers want to uh, buy Cambodian rice, exporters have to send them different samples. Yes. Uh, but as of end 2012, mm. the Institute of Standard of Cambodia under Ministry of Industry, Mines and Energy has come up with a Cambodian basic national standard. Mm. So now the Cambodian rice does have mm. a standard. Mm. Uh, the standard is being adopted. It's been officially released. Mm. Uh, a English version is now been uh, uh, working uh, on by uh, International Finance Corporation mm. uh, to help produce a English version for the international market. Interesting. So slowly we are moving towards having more adequate norms mm. for our Cambodian products mm. and then that is part of the competitiveness mm. process on mm. how do we enhance uh, uh, or better sell our products. Mm. So, if, if I can summarize a bit what uh, we just uh, discussed is that, you know, uh, competitiveness has a lot to do with uh, the, the soft infrastructure and the hard infrastructure. Right. We, we, we talk a lot about hard infrastructure, but uh, we have not uh, touched uh, so much on the soft infrastructure, you know, because, say, for example, if you look at, uh, you know, w w we get a good product, we get the norm, you know, we get a standard in place, you know, we get a buyer for that matter, mm -hmm. right? And we've been able to uh, reduce the, uh, the, the the energy cost by having so like alternative uh, uh, source of energy, for example, all these things being in place. I still think that the soft infrastructure play quite a bit when you move to trade facilitation, for example. You know, correct? Yes. W w what's your take on that? Well, the hard is like having a car, and the soft mm. is like putting in gasoline. You yes. know, you can put diesel, uh, yes. depending on the engine. You mm. can put uh, a sort of premium. Uh, top quality gasoline mm. and then the car would perform at a different uh, yes. stage. Yes. Uh, so the soft again is also um, determinant when you are talking about uh, competitiveness uh, of Cambodian products. Yes. Uh, again if we go back to energy, let's say we talk about uh, two ministries mm. that oversee the uh, uh, electricity. Mm. In, in Cambodia, which yeah, is yeah. MIMI and uh, Ministry of uh, Environment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, environmental Impact Assessment, that's what they do, right? The Ministry of, Envi uh, of Environment looks after the uh, uh, environmental impact, okay. uh, but they do not have much decision mm. uh, in mm. overall uh, yeah. policy. Yes. It's MIMI who has the predominant okay. position. Okay. However, uh, MIMI also do not have probably much mm. expertise in house, mm. so Our they have to rely on yes, every sure. single so, so that, that independent require, company. Yeah, so, so it, it, yeah, I mean, I, I can see, I can see what, what you're trying to get in the sense that uh, at the end of the day, this uh, public-private sector partnership Correct. plays a big role. Uh, internal collaboration, you know, cooperation among uh, different institutions who right. are working in the sector is important, right? Right. But again, government also need to have a it's clear standard, right? uh, sort of a uniform standard okay. across yes. Yes. Uh, okay. the industry. Mm. Okay. Otherwise, you end up having a sort mismatch. of mismatch yeah. and misalignment mm. of uh, different mm. rules and regulations mm. from different players. Mm. And so then it would be very difficult for you to uh, actually uh, manage that from the national perspective. I see. Okay. Good. Good.
Well, David, we're coming to the end of the uh, program. Uh, what's, your, what's your last message uh, on competitiveness of Cambodia's economy? Competitiveness, like I said, is uh, predominantly a, uh, uh, the view of every single company yes. and every single government to work together on how do we again achieve maximization of our synergy. Yes. Uh, it's all about learning to collaborate. Mm. And it's all about, especially from the government perspective, it's all about listening mm. to issues that are being put forth by mm. the uh, private sector. Yes. Uh, so if we can both do our little bit from both private sector and government side, mm. uh, I guess with a lot of uh, good view, with a lot of uh, nationalist sort of a sentiment mm. uh, to drive further mm. uh, the competitiveness of the country, there would be a good chance for us once we reach the middle income status that mm. we could sustain the uh, current growth rate. Also, I want your last word on industrial development, moving Cambodia up the industrial uh, development chain. Industrial development is also about um, gaining more uh, paradigm shift. Mm. Okay, you know? that's, that's uh, a big word. At the moment, we are still very much thinking at a uh, uh, micro level. We need to be able to have that strategic helicopter view mm. for both government and private sector yes. in order to understand where do we want to be uh, mm. in terms of roadmap yes. uh, 10, 20 years uh, down the road. Yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, David. Uh, let me just uh -huh. summarize uh, from the short discussion that, you know, for Cambodia to move up the so-called the, the industrial value chain there there are certain uh, key elements that we need uh, to to bear in mind that you know we the country have to provide environment of competitiveness uh, for both on the soft infrastructure as well as the hard infrastructure um, competitiveness uh, you know not just for the country but also also at the industrial level and here there's a uh, there's a big demand there's a big need uh, for this uh, public private sector partnership where the government put in place, uh, you know, a regulatory policy regime, but then at the same time, how does uh, it work with the private sector, who are in fact ultimately the financier, the investor in in, in the process? How the the two can work together, right? I think it's also important from the discussion that you know uh, the country have uh, put in place a system of norm of standard to be able to project Cambodia that we are, uh, you know, equally as capable to meet the demand, the, the sometimes very difficult, rigid demand of uh, both the uh, foreign investor investing in the country, but at the same time for the consumer, for the company and the across the ocean who are the, the buyer of our Cambodian product. So uh, maintaining a, a, an international standard is very important uh, to, to assure our place you know, in this, uh, you know, ferocious uh, competitive uh, world as we live today. Um, and last is that the, the demand for, you know, uh, you know, sustainability from the economic uh, development perspective require that Cambodia look at diversification, you know, uh, you know, from existing agricultural product for that matter, to look at other, you know, uh, sort of like uh, industrial crop, like rubber where it has a lot of potential to develop uh, all the I industry uh, you know uh, along the way as well as tap uh, you know natural resource that we have for example uh, we, we're now uh, producing uh, sugar you know which require a lot of uh, uh, land you know a lot of labor force uh, you know to 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 develop uh, into a you know uh, industry in itself so in all in all I think we're doing quite well on in the rice sector the prospect for rubber is very good. The, uh, the sugar we're starting to export, and on the industrial front, we see you know uh, stringent, difficult uh, customer like uh, uh, the Japanese industrialists moving to Cambodia, and this is a good sign where I see you know that Cambodia is progressing you know steadily toward uh, uh, meeting its goal uh, or its objective of being a middle-income country in the next several years. So on that note, good night. All right, so...